My name is Kaniz Dupree. I'm an exoneree who spent 30 years in prison for a crime I didn't commit. I was locked up for 22 years. Total of 20 years. I was incarcerated for 36 years for a crime that I didn't commit. Spent half of my life, man, basically in there from the age of 28, 53. That's like, it's like 25 years of my life. I'm 35 years old, and I just got exonerated after 16 years of wrongful imprisonment. I was 16 uh, at the time I was arrested. I was incarcerated 24 years. I didn't believe that I'd ever get out. I kind of lost faith. When it comes to prison, you don't ask how you're gonna stay strong. You just have to. You just have to. You have to keep going. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I thought that I was going to die in prison, and I'm so happy that I was wrong. The Innocence Project started in 1992 out of a law clinic at Cardozo Law School. People never considered prior to our work just how frequently innocent people can be wrongly convicted. Barry and I were both working as public defenders in the South Bronx in New York City. And a colleague of ours, after we left, had been involved in a robbery case and rape case where his client had more than a dozen alibi witnesses saying that he was at a Bible study meeting. Despite the 17 alibi witnesses, Marion had been picked out uh, in a photo array by the people harmed in this crime. And that was enough, even though he had 17 eyewitnesses. Barry and Peter had heard of a new and more accurate technique of testing biological material, DNA. Because no one had ever done DNA testing here in a criminal case. And we tried to do DNA testing, but the rape could have been destroyed. And we did other testing, which eventually proved that that man was innocent. But it got us involved with DNA, and we said, wow, is extraordinary potential here. For all these cases where people were tried before they had DNA, maybe we could test the hypothesis of innocence and prove that many people were in fact innocent. I have to say that at that time, the idea that there were innocent people being arrested and prosecuted and sentenced to jail was really not commonly held, quite the contrary. Most people in the criminal legal system thought it was a crazy idea, a radical idea. So I first had the privilege of working with the Innocence Project when I joined the Federal Defender's Office in Philadelphia. I was in uh, their capital habeas corpus unit, which meant that I was representing uh, people who were sentenced to death in Pennsylvania. Nick Yaris was actually the very first case I handled, and it turned out that Nick, from the very first time I met him, from the very first time anyone at our office met him, was adamant and unrelenting um, in his view and his assertion that he was not only innocent of the crime for which he had been convicted and condemned to death, but that he wanted DNA testing and was really just demanding DNA testing. And so the first phone call I made was the Innocence Project. And the Innocence Project worked with me for the entire seven years that I represented Nick on the DNA. They guided every turn. And because of that instruction, Nick became the first death sentence prisoner in Pennsylvania to be exonerated by DNA evidence. Had they not stepped in and provided us the, the expert guidance and advice that they did, it is entirely possible that Nick Yaris could have been executed, notwithstanding the fact that he was absolutely and unquestionably innocent. Nobody wants to admit they put someone in prison falsely. No prosecutor, no police investigator, no judge. So it's vitally important that some independent body be monitoring what the judicial system does. The Innocence Project has exposed reliability problems with evidence such as bite marks, ballistics, blood splatter, and even some fingerprints and eyewitness identification that still result in convicting people regardless of the method's reliability. One of the most important things that the Innocence Project has done is shine a light on the very real and prevalent problem of junk science in courtrooms. Many of us from a young age have been conditioned to believe that if somebody with scientific credentials 
comes into a courtroom and testifies as an expert, then what they're telling us must surely be reliable. Things like hair analysis, fingerprint analysis, even bite mark analysis. What we've learned in large measure through the work of the Innocence Project is how many of these techniques are pure junk science. This lack of standards for evidence had devastating consequences for Marvin Anderson. It was my first time ever being incarcerated, locked up for anything. At the age of 18, Anderson was convicted of rape based on faulty eyewitness testimony. The victim had been shown a set of mug shots, all photos in black and white, with the exception of Marvin's, which was in color. Marvin Anderson was falsely accused of rape in Virginia. He served 15 years before he was ultimately exonerated by the Innocence Project using DNA evidence. When my case happened, all they saw was that, you know, black man raped a white woman sentenced to 210 years in prison. That's all they knew about. But on the day that I was exonerated, the news media was there, but it was a chance for me to prove to society once again that I was telling the truth from the very beginning and that I did not commit a crime. So it was very joyful for not only for me, but for my mother and my family and all the people that had supported me and stood behind me during my time I was incarcerated. It's amazing what he's managed to do with his life after this horrific tragedy that I think would destroy most people. He's actually followed his childhood dream, not only to be a firefighter, he's actually the chief of the fire department in the town where he lives in Virginia, and he's a member of the board of the Innocence Project. To be able to leave the bitterness and the resentment that he must surely feel behind and turn and make his life something that he had dreamed of is inspiring and it hopefully encourages the rest of us to realize that we must not rest until everybody who has been falsely convicted has been identified, exonerated, and released from prison. The Innocence Project has helped more than 230 wrongly convicted people secure their freedom. I spent about 25 years in prison for a murder I didn't commit. And the Innocence Project gave me my freedom. They gave me my life back. I was an average guy, making average money at an average job in an average neighborhood. I lived in the suburbs. I didn't have any criminal record. The worst thing I'd ever done was a speeding ticket. And so if it could happen to me, there's no reason it couldn't happen to you. And that's why the Assistance Project is important. During the prosecution, prosecutors withheld a number of pieces of what would have been exculpatory evidence. They literally hid evidence that would have exculpated Michael Morton from this crime that he never committed. After many years of being denied uh, access to evidence or an opportunity to do, do the DNA test, we eventually were able to demonstrate that Michael was wrongly convicted of killing his wife. That was an example of prosecutorial misconduct because if the prosecutor, Ken Anderson in that case, had revealed exculpatory evidence that was in his file, Michael Morton never would have been convicted. After he was exonerated, Michael worked with the Innocence Project to make policy changes that would prevent what happened to him from happening to others. Michael was able to work with a right-left coalition in Texas, and we passed the Michael Morton Act, which revolutionized to the whole criminal justice system in the state. The Innocence Project pushes hard not only to exonerate innocent people, pushes hard in order to ensure that the people responsible for those tragedies receive an appropriate level of accountability. You know, when we talked to Milton Friedman originally about creating the Friedman Prize, we talked about what kind of person would get it. Could be a great scholar, could be a political leader, uh, could be specifically the man who stood in front of the tank at Tiananmen Square. And the Innocence Project takes on individual clients who have wrongly been punished by the power of the state. So it's kind of like the man standing in front of the tank, trying to defy this system that is very difficult to turn around once it's made its decision. As a liberty lover, what could be worse than someone's freedom being taken away for them to be locked up unjustly? And when I think of the Innocence Project, what could be better than restoring those lives? I think there's a wonderful symmetry between people we've honored with previous Freedman Prizes, people 
who are risking their lives to fight for liberty and honoring the Innocence Project who restores lives, gives people back their life, their liberty. Milton Friedman's concern for liberty applies just as much to the United States as it does to the rest of the world. Notions of civil liberties and civil rights and freedom know no national borders. We started with one project here in New York City. As of now, we have 55 projects in the National Innocence Network throughout the United States, and we have more than two dozen projects throughout the world. So the problems of wrongful conviction, the failure of people to follow the rule of law are international problems, not localized to any particular form of government or any particular country. Freedom is not a state. Freedom is an act. And to have allies like Cato, who are dedicated to protecting freedom, to making sure that people get fair trials, that we have good science, these are extraordinarily important goals. How does freedom mean to me? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> freedom means everything. Without freedom, you've got nothing. Freedom is the totality of life. It's the sum of everything. Good. Freedom to me at this point, like I say, it's a new life. It's like being rebound. It's like given a chance to live a life I have been denied. Enjoy life and go when I want to, come when I want to, you know? Walk down the street and go to the store and do this interview with you. I can go to the grocery store, I can pay my bills, I can drive a car, I can take a bath. I love just being free, not under somebody's control. What the Innocence Project has done is it has underscored the importance of reviving the founder's vision of a fair and just criminal justice system, a system that actually earns the name justice. 30 years from now, when we are looking back on the impact of the, the Innocence Project, we're going to see, because of the work of the Innocence Project, the American criminal justice system is truly a criminal justice system and not just a criminal legal system.